Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is TBR Schmidt and this is my wife Samantha. Hello. And today we are watching episode six of Generation Kill. What'd you think of the last episode? I mean, there's just a lot going on. I feel like there is an issue with morale in general. Yeah. And I don't know how that's going to affect them, but we've only have two episodes left. Right. So I'm very interested to see kind of where the series leads. Yeah, uh, last episode was pretty rough. Again, a lot of more civilian casualties, questionable calls, stressful situations, and you know, they're pretty deep in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said, we only have two episodes left. It's gonna be interesting to kind of see how this plays out. So far, they've stayed relatively healthy. Yeah. So hopefully through the next two episodes, they remain that way. Yeah, that's definitely been kind of a surprise that you don't really think about until you really think about it is, this is like the first series like this that we've watched. We're not seeing any of our main characters get hit, really. Yeah. Um, we had two in the last episode. They weren't really central, like main Marines. Yeah, they weren't um, some of the main Marines we're following and their wounds, they seem to be able to recover from them just fine. Right, so. That is interesting when you think about it, because I hadn't thought about it until you said something. Yeah, they're deep. I mean, they've gone through some rough stuff, especially last episode. That was a terrible situation. Yeah. So they've gone through some rough stuff. They're, you know, often alone, deep in enemy territory. And compared to the other miniseries we've seen, they've had no serious casualties. Right. So only two episodes left. Hopefully it stays that way, but yeah. definitely excited to kind of see how this plays out. Yeah, me too. So if you'd like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we have reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on our Instagrams, Twitch, or Twitter, all those links are in the description as well. And with that, let's get into the episode. What's the hack? Oh my God. I thought that hot, she was killing you. God. You stuck him in a magazine. Yeah, he looks very unstable. I mean, I'm sure it's pretty dark. But that was ridiculous. I'm taking him to a field interrogation. Man, they just rode with him up on the <laughs> front. <laughs> they seem to just be on the sidelines, watching the action go down in the town. As you know, I just returned from a meeting with General Mattis. Dowdy, General Mattis relieved him of his command. Huh. Was also relieved of the ammo for his sidearm. I don't know what that means, but it must be pretty intense. Not fully embrace maneuver warfare. Longest march since the Barbary campaign against Tripoli in 1803. Wow. Godfather will find a mission for this battalion. Now at critical moments, Dowdy hesitated to execute orders. Ferrando has a long memory too. Interesting speech for sure. Yeah. Was Godfather talking about us in there? If you don't square away Nate Vick, you'll be in his sights. I don't know if that's exactly because Encino Man was pretty aggressive. And right. He even got praised by Godfather for it. New ones with milkshakes, strawberry chocolate, and all. Feel the love. <laughs> Baby. Fuck. Alone. <laughs> You did nothing wrong. Let's see if there's a better way to stop these cars. We can't just shoot these civilians like we're doing. Marines aren't cops, Brad. We're an aggressive force. Damn, man. Didn't we kick their asses already? You should be more like Trombley. <laughs> more like Trombley? <laughs> Whopper Junior! Whopper Junior! I don't know what they're chanting. Whopper Junior? That's what it sounds like to me. Just leaving his gun. I'm sure he has to feel terrible about what happened. Yeah, it's definitely affecting him. Half the guy's got the shits. Both right now? Yeah, I'll take him. General Matt is shit can Colonel Dowdy. Colonel wasn't a team player. Can happen to anyone. <laughs> Fuck this little guy. Yeah. There'll be no more questioning of my orders. Interpret your intent to the best of my ability. Outstanding work last night taking down that EPW. Doing my job. Terribly. He did not want to surrender. Well, your platoon's been busy shooting civilians at roadblocks. Bravo 3 was taking in live prisoners. I heard. Good work, Dave. Just a pissing contest. It's a good thing your CO was there. If you want to believe that, sir, what was the reason for this meeting? <laughs> Battalion says we're moving on. That's ASAP. 
Lieutenant. Oh, he just saved him. Right. Lieutenant, I was about to Yeah. But no. <laughs> There's so much hatred from the bottom up for some people. Why were they calling you Whopper Jr.? Why were they calling him that? Come on, what's the answer? Mobiles at 11 o'clock. They naked? Yeah, it looks like it. They got naked intent. They must think that's the only way they won't get shot. Well, watch your fucking sector. They say they were robbed. Lying motherfuckers. He's got a horse cock like animals. You don't want to get that thing angry. Americans beat Saddam's army. Now his army beat us. What you do? You can take it up with the UN. Found the Haji helmet. How do I look? Like a target. Go back to his motorcycle helmet. What we did, running and gunning through those towns, the good stuff and the bad, was all part of the plan. We tied down two Iraqi divisions, saved untold numbers of U.S. soldiers. Team two is out, and three is almost as bad. Jeez, everyone's just got diarrhea. Like we'll be nursing this platoon all the way into Baghdad. I just hope that we get to fuck up some more shit before the war ends. So their plan was just to kind of cause distraction and chaos. Make them think. They were gonna take it. Yeah. It's fucking blown gun. You had optics. Reyes, what kind of piss poor team leader are you not checking out an enemy tank on your perimeter? These men can't walk. If the men are ill, then you should go with them, Corman. Ridiculous. Team three will take it. Your men are sicker. Thank God there's some sort of common sense. <gasps> Doesn't even have a turret. What the hell was that? That sounds like an animal, right? Yeah. I shit my pants. Oh my god. That yeah, was, <laughs> I think, I guess it wasn't an animal, yeah. it was him shitting his pants. Gunner Sergeant Griego, he informed us that They're covering your ass, it. Nate. It resembles an incompetent moron climbing up the asshole of his company commander by inventing a bullshit mission. I woke you 40 mics ago to affirm the order. I hadn't been to sleep in 36 hours. I have no recollection whatsoever of you waking. I thought I was dreaming. Do not fuck with my men. This is getting ridiculous. It's getting so out of control. It's definitely worth it to send them out to that tank that they already knew was disabled. That was interesting though. Did Gunny actually go to Lieutenant Fick and ask him? And he literally was just so delirious. He said yes and thought it he was. It seemed like it, yeah. So he wasn't lying. He wasn't coming up with a story. Yeah, but you're going to come up to someone that hasn't slept in 36 <laughs> hours? These people aren't from al -Qaeda. They say they're from Baghdad. Wow. They walked over 100 miles? That's insane. Support you? Keep a good distance from these people. Roger. Mm -hmm. Slow walk him. Stay hard. Hey, kid. Nice jacket. All the way from Baghdad. In that heat. Keep your fucking distance from him! I don't think anybody's going to want to eat anything. Yeah, they're all sick. Definitely a lot closer than I thought they would be. Yeah. Carry that miss? I got it. Yo, break out some MREs. Me, 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 me. Thank you for letting me pass on my own road in my own country. <laughs> it is a beautiful city and you are bombing it. And our president is very stupid. Maybe you are here for liberation, I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, don't, don't give that thing to me. <laughs> yeah, I give him a hand. Wow, going the extra step. Mikey, give us a hand. Definitely not keeping their distance now. No. We just turned this combat team into a hayride. <laughs> Doesn't matter what we do here. Quarter of these babies are going to die. Jeez. We're helping people. Probably the first time that they actually feel like they're helping. This humanitarian stuff, we get lost in it, we're not combat effective. The battalion wants us Oscar Mike. Well, they're gone. Don't throttle it. You just smoke first. I'm pretty fast, right? Yeah. Fucking <gasps> <gasps> head exploded! No way. Come on. No, we checked that before we hit him in the head with a fucking 40 mic mic. They actually tried to do something to prevent civilian deaths and accidentally kill a civilian. Oh, fuck, man. Oh, my God. Do not run that over, Ray. Oh, missed the head, but went over the body. It's over for us. This wasn't what we trained for. I'm a hunter, not a fucking truck driver corralling gun platforms. When you get your men out alive, I gotta tell you, I'm glad this is over. Slit trench latrine. That's a win. That's my recon mission, then. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to look at it. 
I mean, you were the first ones there and everyone's coming out alive. Yeah. I want you to know you've done good, Tony. I just want you to know that I really appreciate that. The shit that we've done here, the people we've killed, back in the civilian world, dog, if we did this, we would go to prison. Yeah. Think like a white man. Laying on metals for what we do. I'm tweaking, bro. Don't feel right unless I'm strapped. I'm gonna go full guard duty. Hmm. Just can't calm down. Get your head out of it. Yeah. General thinks we're slaying dragons. But between you and me, it's bullshit. You men need another mission. Stay frosty. It's really trying to get some more action. Yeah. <laughs> At first I thought they were excited about the supplies. I didn't realize it was a woman. Oh shit, heads up! Oh, shit, smash! Get yourself squared up here! Tell you not to desecrate your mask with perversions! Why the fuck are your helmets? First time I was like on his side. <laughs> right? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh wow, it's Brad. What is he doing? What, do you like give him some Rolling Stone drugs or something? <laughs> Just ask him what it would be if he wasn't a Marine. God, he <laughs> wants to be a ballerina? <laughs> I think he wants to be a plane. Oh! Or a bird. I don't know. All right. <laughs> Just needed a minute. <laughs> There's something I've been keeping from you. I wasn't sure we were going to live to share this moment. <gasps> Chef Boyardi, the master. <laughs> the master. How are you going to keep this from your dearest pal, Ray Ray? <laughs> wow. No, 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 wait, 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 not yet. <laughs> the reporter. <laughs> Ray, you got to share it with Tromley. What? He'll kill her. <laughs> All the same if you're a fucking psycho. <laughs> One of you guys still has my girlfriend's picture. I hate to tell you this, but your girlfriend's kind of a whore. <laughs> she doesn't deserve you, man. No. You did just call him Whopper Jr. Now, what the hell is that about? Burger King. Right. BK. Baby killer. Oh my god. Damn, Brad, what else? Smiling you about it? Humvee? Calling you a baby killer. Shoot some civilians, you get a reputation. He didn't mean that. You're a fucking messed up hit. You can't even eat ravioli. <laughs> At least Walt seems better. Yeah, Walt seems better. The northern flank. We assume a significant. Republican Guard present. When Iraqi mechanized Republican Guard division is unaccounted for. Gentlemen, we are going to Bakuba. Delta Company will be with us. The reservists have arrived. Hmm. So they don't get to go at it alone. Mm hmm. But they're still going on another mission. Right. Everyone kind of seems back in business. No one's puking or. I mean, I guess it's better they all got it at once, right? Yeah. Now they're all better at once. The fuck are you doing? I'm writing in my journal. Look, they say we fought valiantly here. I wanted to know before we retarded. One bullet in the head, our whole platoon is squared away. Jeez. Good work. He knows. Just so incompetent. He's just like losing it though now. Yeah. At this point. Nate, you have to become insane. To survive in combat. Yeah. And I guess he's doing what he needs to do to keep moving forward. Right. The magic line. No American unit has gone past this line. You're really going into it. Yeah. These Delta fucks are like LAPD cops. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they're here now, Brad. No wrong with you. Great. <laughs> no fucking way. We're working with reservists. Check it out. Bum wow. <laughs> Ridiculous. Hey, my balls smell like Jack's mouth. How do you know what his mouth smells like? My balls were in it. <laughs> we're not in our mop suits. That means there's no WMDs. Why are we here in the first place? Isn't that the whole point of us being here? We're just about done with this bitch. Focus, Ray. Focus. Got to cross it. Once more into the great good night. Girlfriend's pussy. Is that Shakespeare? About his girlfriend's pussy. <laughs> oh. Enemy contact on both sides of the road. I have no targets. Yeah, I can't see anyone. Oh, hold on, buddy. That's a fucking village over there. There are people in that village, Walt. We're gonna die if they don't get us out of here. God, Captain America. Ooh. 
Oh my god. It got passed down. We have no comms with Delta. They're always in a situation where they don't have communication with someone else who's just killing civilians. Yeah. Stay in line. Person dead or asleep? Oh. A week ago, they didn't know we could see their thermals at night. Now they're adapting. Uh oh. The fuck is the guy shooting at? You dumb motherfucker! Oh, an Iraqi helmet! Jesus. Who the fuck is shooting at us? It was Alpha, Gabe. Alpha. That wasn't even Delta who fucked up? Well, they said they saw his helmet, too. Our order to the hold up is Watch for Alpha, over. At least they're shooting actual enemies this time. Yeah. Yeah, they're not shooting themselves or civilians. Turn that shit off. All right, fine. No talking, no radio. Jeez, Brad. Brad's had enough. Just got shot at. Fucking reserves, man. Get the fuck up. Come on. You saved our asses. This is the first real fighting we've seen. Move blow your fucking head off. Captain. We got a live one, man! I'm sorry I shook your hand. You abused that prisoner. Captain America did, because he's a psychopath. Yeah. Looks like you won some hearts and minds, sir. And some tongue. I'm afraid if we put our weapons down, the police will come and beat us. We can't drop our weapons either. You ain't got a sergeant no more. Either we killed his ass already or shit, he'd be running away faster than you. <laughs> you want to Baghdad, my friend? We got a prisoner collection center there. For free? I'm so happy. Happy to be a prisoner. How sad is that? That that's better than where he was doing before. Yeah. Don't these fucking guys know that we won the war already? Still could be some bad guys who want to play. Boys. God damn it, Ray. No country music. <laughs> well. Uh -oh. so always have to be on alert. Anything you have on a motherfucker, you wear it the fuck out. But you will never hear a Marine in this platoon bitch that we could die at any second. Hell no. That's what we signed up for. I'd give my life for any brother in here. I know any one of them would do the same for me. Damn, War Scribe, you just spit on my fucking rack, dog. <laughs> what a conversation that was. Jesus. All right. That was episode six of Generation Kill. What'd you think? That had a much different feel. Yeah, that was an interesting episode. It, it kind of was a little bit slower, kind of took us back a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but definitely a different feel. It definitely felt like most people were in a better place mentally. At the beginning of the episode, Walt seemed to be struggling as he was writing his report, but he came around and it seemed like he was doing better. I was a little bit worried when he just like left his gun there. Yeah. But he seemed to be doing much better. Obviously there's still that one guy I don't know who he is, the shorter guy that's with Encino Man. Yeah. Him and Nate. Going at it. Yeah, and I think like he's fueling that fire with Encino Man too because I don't really think they would really have a problem. Nate obviously thinks he's incompetent, but I think they got that out there and I think they could just Continue. move forward yeah. if it weren't for him. Clearly, he took advantage of the fact that Nate hadn't slept in 36 hours by probably half waking him up, asking him about that stupid bullshit mission <laughs> to go look at a tank that clearly was disabled right was not an issue you know we did see a decent amount of like a firefight but also not they were kind of in the middle of it but not it wasn't as extreme as some of the other situations they've been in in the past right and i thought this was going to be the worst of it yeah but yeah just talking more about how the episode kind of had a different feel yeah towards the beginning obviously like you said, Walt was kind of in a bad place. I believe his name is Walt. Everyone was pretty violently sick. Um, but as the episode went on, Walt was better. Everyone seemed to be healthy again. There was a lot more joking around. There was the Chef Boyardee little campfire, which everyone seemed to really enjoy. So the morale definitely seemed to improve quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure if that was just time or if the end of the war was in sight. So maybe you start feeling a little differently, but I feel like that goes both ways because you have Brad talking about how like 
this is a wasted opportunity. Like we are trained hunters and warriors. Right. And they've pretty much for six episodes have just been kind of doing BS missions, mm -hmm. bullshit, killing a lot of civilians. You know, yeah, they got some sort of victories, but for the most part, this doesn't seem like what they could actually truly accomplish. Right. It does seem a little bit of a waste for how well I'm sure they're trained. But then the way that they, you know, especially Godfather, how they kind of play it up, it's like this was absolutely 100% intentional. Like we were meant to cause chaos and confusion and frustration. And it's like, okay, like, uh, sure, like that is exactly kind of what you achieved. Um, so it's just an interesting way to kind of look at it. So Brad is kind of feeling like a wasted opportunity. Nate kind of came at it the other side saying like, we were the first Marines, like we were the first American boots, I believe on the ground. Mm -hmm. And look how deep we are. Everyone so far is gonna come out of this alive. Right. So he's like, I'll, I'll take this any day. Yeah. So it's just two different ways to kind of approach the same scenario. Right, different perspectives. Yeah, you can look at it as just chaos and stupidity, or you can look at it as they intentionally caused chaos and stupidity because it confused the enemy. Right. So you could boil this down however you want. For whatever reason, everyone's morale and spirits definitely did seem to improve. And Godfather got them that extra mission he was hoping for even if it was with Delta, mm -hmm. to kind of go deep. And I definitely thought once they crossed that line that you know it would be kind of the worst action we'd seen so far, but it just kind of seemed pretty routine for them. Right, so we again, I don't think we've gone through a single episode without seeing at least one civilian die. Oh yeah. That was kind of shocking and it was also really frustrating. Like they were doing so much good in trying to get them through. Um, obviously, there was that conversation as well um, with the woman that was walking down, kind of like, well, thank you for letting me walk on my own street here. Like, what are you guys even doing here? Right. And I'm sure there's a lot of different emotions and there's a lot of people that feel that way. And there's a lot of people that are happy because they're like, you know, our president has no idea what he's doing. and. Everyone, though, there is affected greatly. Yeah. I think people are very passionate on one side or the other, though. So that was interesting, though, because I think that's the first conversation like that that we've seen. It might not be the first conversation they've had like that, but that's shown on the show. Right. Kind of gave a different perspective for what we've seen. But that was really upsetting to see them. You know, that car was coming in hot. Yeah, I totally forgot about that whole that whole scene because it was one of the few times where they actually all felt like they were doing good. Like yeah. they were helping, giving water, food, carrying stuff. Like, hey, we're actually doing something positive for these people here. And then, yeah, you have that conversation that kind of, what the hell are we doing here again? Even, you know, the reporter kind of had that conversation again of like changing the gear, you know, so we're not concerned about weapons of mass destruction. So what the fuck are we doing then? Right. Like, I thought that's why we were here. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought that was the whole point. Yeah. Yeah, again, it just opens up a lot of eyes, different perspectives. And that was super sad because you finally had a situation where they're like, okay, let's not shoot. Let's do this calmly. Let's shoot the smoke. Let's see how this goes. And skips off the ground and hits the guy in the head and kills him. And it's just like, right. I don't know if that's just like, I mean, it's a sad moment for sure on the show. But is it a deeper meaning? And the way I kind of take it is that regardless of what you're trying to do, war has casualties. So even if you have good intent, there are going to be people who suffer from these actions who you did not want to suffer. That was a rough moment. I totally forgot about that whole scene in this episode. Yeah, no, I think that was probably one of the hardest things that we saw in this episode. Yeah. Everything else was decently lighthearted. And like you said, it was really nice to see them feeling good like you could tell that they felt good in what they were doing but i think it was nate i mean he came back and he was like we can't get into this we can't be into helping these people to feel good the humanitarian effort is going right. to take them out of the combat readiness like at the right. end of the day we are killers we are warriors that's like, why they're there that's why we're here we're not here to transport and carry people's luggage yeah, so that was really interesting. I can see what he means, and it kind of takes me back to the whole mustache situation where it was like, it seemed so small and like, 
the mustache and for this it's like it seems so small for them to be helping but it really can with the mustaches it was it led to the helmet losing yeah. the helmet this it really could take them so far out of the the game that they don't realize or they they're not 100 percent ready they're yeah. they're distracted distracted yeah thinking back on this episode i thought you know this is a little bit slower of episode but there was actually a, quite a bit of like little kind of callbacks and stuff because mm -hmm. When you brought up the mustache thing, that reminded me of, you know, they're all horny Marines acting up with that girl. Yeah. And, you know, he puts on the gas mask to kind of go up and make a joke and hit on her. And that same asshole about the mustaches comes up and shits on all of them. And yeah. it's kind of like, oh, well, yeah, you shouldn't like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like, you yeah. should be prepared with the correct uniforms on. The gear needs to be correct. You need to be alert. Like we're still marines out here in war we're not here at some club where you're just hitting on women right so you know he needed to be an asshole again but it's kind of necessary sometimes it was absolutely warranted in that situation i felt really bad for her like, i'm sure that's something that she probably deals with day to day but yeah not not a good situation no. but it just goes back to your grooming standards mm -hmm. like you are using your gear in inappropriate ways yeah and that being drilled into you you know is hopefully to stop situations like this like you would never put that connection together necessarily to be like you need to use your gas mask appropriately when would you ever think that that connects to using your gas mask joking around hitting on a woman in a you know a wartime situation yeah it's such a stretch but here's an example of how it's actually connected. Right, and then also uh, grooming was the helmet. That yeah. helmet came back and it totally did exactly what he was kind of warned about. It was like, That's, you look like you're wearing an enemy helmet. Yeah, you look like you're an enemy. Yeah. And what happens is they get shot at. Yeah. And we think it was Delta who was talked about being, you know, reserves and just stupid idiots. Yeah. And it was actually someone from Alpha. Yeah who has been with them like the entire time practically. Right. And it's just like, geez Louise. So yeah, these little small things add up and make a difference. Whereas mm. I feel like we've grown because in the first episode, I remember being like, this guy is such an asshole. Who cares? It's just a mustache. Yeah. And at this point now I'm like, get your fucking mustache <laughs> in line. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> so it's just, uh, it's really interesting for sure so many different themes and elements still civilian casualties the morale is still hit or miss on sometimes um, you're still dealing with really incompetent leadership the moment with captain america where he comes and kind of tortures that prisoner i mean um, twice that's true twice yeah he tried to kill the other prisoner when they already had him uh contained and then again you know pretending to stab the other one to the point where I, I believe that guy was from Delta. Yeah. Who we were told like, oh my God, these people are a waste. And he was like, I regret shaking your hand. Like you were a monster. Yeah. He said it to the wrong guy. Right. But you know, it's just like that different perspective where it's like, as a viewer, you're thinking, oh, these guys are probably so stupid. Look, they're taking pictures of a dead body. Like they're just assholes. And then you kind of have the Marine that we've been following get checked by him. Yeah. I guess it just doesn't really matter. It, it can happen from in any division, in any group or something. There's competent people and there's incompetent people. And there's people who are there who are very professional and there's people there who, you know, practically take it as a joke. And that kind of reminds me of like Captain America. He had that one speech to Nate talking about like, I don't remember exactly, but I felt like it was him kind of justifying acting insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knows that he's gone too far and he knows that people are talking about him. I mean, most people are not even really trying to hide it at this point. And I think that was him trying to justify why he's acting the way he's acting. And he's like, well, you do have to be insane. And, you know, there's probably a little bit of truth to that, that you do, but obviously he's like- To a different level. Yeah, so far gone. To be in that type, like you have to put yourself somewhere else. I feel like the, for me, the, ultimate position would be something like Spears from yes, Band of Brothers yes. where he was like you have to essentially pretend like you're you're already dead yeah the second we got here we all died yeah so whatever happens from this point on it you know it's not really affects me because I'm dead yes um, so that's like an insane way to think 
but it's also clears him up to act like a soldier, like a warrior. Right. Whereas, you know, Captain America is just, I'm going to be fucking wild because that's all I can do to yeah. stay moving forward. Yeah, he's just, he's being dangerous though, and he's not skilled like Spears was. <laughs> so it's it's a dangerous combination for him. Yeah. So a super interesting episode for yeah. sure. And we only have one episode left. It seems like the war's over. Yeah. At least for them. Yes. Well, they, you know, their their purpose of being these recon marines is not necessarily warranted anymore when we have essentially when we have all of Iraq is like invaded at this point. Yeah, so I'm very interested to see if they keep heading north. I feel like they're gonna hit trouble, but we'll see. I mean, this, so far, we've still remained relatively casualty free. Yeah, and this might have been their last mission. Yeah. Because Godfather struggled to get this one. Yeah. So maybe they're just chilling or something until they get sent home. I, I don't know. Yeah, so very interested to see how they end the series. Yeah, so if you would like to see the full length reaction to this, as well as everything else that we've reacted to, the link to our Patreon is in the description. If you would like to interact with us on any other types of social media, all those links will be in the description as well. And with that, peace everyone. Bye. Bye.